Well, here I am again, and now we're going to talk about what I'm going to call tender perennials. So those are things we're growing in the ground, in the yard, that can't stay out over winter because once they freeze, they're dead. So usually, for almost all of this stuff, I would do it after we've had a killing frost. So not a frost where the ground is frozen and I can't dig, but a frost where everything on top of the ground dies. So I've got a bunch of different stuff here, so we'll go through it all, I guess, or some of it. So this was a, imagine this as a, a frozen canna lily. So I've just dug up the bottom, and let's say I don't want to make a mess, so I'm not going to hose it off, but if I hosed it off, I would end up with this. I'd end up with this. So that's a growing bit, and these are growing bits that are going to be next year's plants. So I had these growing in a small pot before I dug them out the other day. And I, uh, from one little plant this big, I ended up with this much root, this many roots. So lots of roots. They grow a lot. They're pretty good growers. The trouble with these is that sometimes people have trouble overwintering them. You know we've had them in the park for a number of years, the Hort Park, and sometimes uh, we have to go looking for people to give us canna, canna uh, lily roots because the ones we stored just didn't make it. So what I do with mine, I do two things. Sometimes if they're in a pot and it's not too big a plant, I might throw the whole pot in the basement, cut the tops off, throw the whole pot in the basement. I have a, it's kind of a, a bit damp uh, but it, and dark near my furnace, but the furnace is there, so it's not really, really cold. Maybe it's 50 degrees or something like that. So we want to cut. We don't need to keep all these big, long roots here. So that's what I do sometimes. Sometimes I dig them up and I throw them in a bucket, cardboard box, something like that. Or I have these, I use, uh, I have some of these apple crates. So I use them for lots of my stuff because they have little handles and, you know, it's easy to carry them up and down the stairs. So anything like that. Now what my brother-in-law does, and he has really good success. His basement is very warm. His furnace is there too, but his basement's warmer than ours. He takes his cannas and he wraps them in newspaper. puts an elastic on them, and just stores them like that on the floor. But his basement is not damp or anything, just like a regular dry basement. And that works really well. He has no get, nothing dies on him like that. I've gone there and gotten some sometimes when I worked for extras. So that works real well for the cannons. I didn't talk about tools for this part. So what we need for this part is we're gonna need a little saw of some sort. You know, this is a kind of a fancy saw, but often I just use a steak knife with a bit of a serrated edge that works for stuff. And we'll need a marker. And then we might need some clippers also. We won't need the little brush anymore. We're not cleaning anything up. For... So, and we need labels. So, uh, for instance, for that canna, if I have four different kinds of cannas, I want to make sure that I know which are which in the spring, so they have to be labeled. So, little labels and then a magic marker to write the name of the plant if you know the name on it. That's about all the organizing we have to do. So uh, when I grow amaryllis, often I just plant them in a flower pot with other plants. I can have a planter, a big planter. That way I don't forget to water them. And I know where they are in the fall, if they're in that planter somewhere. So once the top's pretty much dead on them, this is what you get. And I just take that and put it in the basement in the dark and wait until it starts to grow. So when it starts to grow out of this part here, that'll be the new flower bud coming. And a bulb this size should have a flower next year. It should be safe to have a flower. Now sometimes when you take them out, if they feel a little bit, you know, like they've had too much water, then I would put this in the garage for uh, a couple of weeks as long as it's not gonna freeze in the garage. Make sure it was really dry before I put it in the basement. But normally they're okay. Some people uh, grow their amaryllis in pots, and they leave them in pots 
all year long. So again, if you've had it outside all year and it's been growing, when it's a little bit just before frost, you can stop watering it, cut the tops off, and take it to the basement and let it have a rest. Not everybody does that either, but that's what I would do with these. I would let them have a rest. And again, if you feel the bulb, you can feel how big it is here. And if it's a decent size, like this big anyway, it will probably have a flower for you sometime after Christmas. So that's what I do with amaryllis. Yeah, I've got a whole pail of stuff here. Oh, I've got a dahlia over here too. So here's a dahlia. And again, we have to imagine we had a frost and the whole top is, is gone. So one thing we have to do right now though, before it freezes, is go out with our labels, figure out which ones you want to keep for next year, and label them. Otherwise, once it's frozen, you can't tell if it's an orange flower or a pink flower or what it is, right? If you have a few of them. So I don't remember. I don't know if you remember uh, watching the little video of my garden the other day, but if you did, there's a bunch of dahlias at the front. Uh, my job this week will be to go out with my labels and label everybody right down at the bottom. So once they're frozen, I can cut the tops off. I have something like this. And I don't have to take it out of the ground right away. I just want to make sure I take it out of the ground before it's going to be continuously cold and we have hard ground frost. And once I dig them out, uh, I'm not very good at this. Uh, I'm going to explain this one way, but this is not how I normally do it. I'm too lazy. So this is all nice and clean. Usually when I dig mine up, there's hunks of ground still stuck to them because it's been raining a bit. It's been very dry right now, so that's why it was easy to get all the ground off these. And I've washed this off with a hose. And you can easily tell where every little segment is here. And it's not, things are hard, but they're not really hard like, I don't know, like wood. So see how easy it was to split that? What I often do is just take the whole thing and with a little bit of ground, put them in one of my buckets and put them in the basement and do all this part in the spring. But uh, a lot of people recommend doing it this time of the year because you can make next year's plants. There we go, see? So as long as it has a little shoot, that's going to have some eyes down there. Let's see if we can find an eye that's big enough to actually see in the video. This might be hard to see. But there's an eye, so that's going to grow a new stem, just like a potato. So those are really hard to find. If you just if you leave them until the spring and try to pull them apart, they don't pull apart nearly this easily. And the eyes are usually not able, able to see the eyes either because everything's dried up so much by then. So once I get them dug up, uh, I leave them in the garage if I can for a few days, as long as possible, so they're not too long in the basement. And then I'll take them, uh, put them in my basement, which is dark and a bit damp, and not cold, but not certainly not room temperature. And that's where they'll stay until spring with the, with the cannons, and they'll be fine. So uh, sometimes on the internet you'll see how people are doing this kind of thing, and what they're doing is they're taking. They're smaller pieces, I'm sure you have an eye, wrapping it in a clear wrap and then keeping them in a cool place like a uh, refrigerator, uh, you know, the drawer that you keep your lettuce and stuff in, something like that, a cool spot. And then again, if you do that, it's uh, important to check them every now and then to make sure you don't have a lot of mold or something growing on your pieces of, of tuber because then, of course, they won't live if they all become rotten. Uh, but what I do, I just don't even look at them till spring. It's a little more work for me in the spring, but I, I, I've never had any trouble with them dying over winter on me. Of course, it's harder to make a whole bunch of cuttings that way. This way, I can have, have as many plants as I can find eyes. I can, like, I could have enough maybe from this plant to plant half my front yard with. Whereas, if I do it in the spring, I might end up with two pieces, or I might only end up with one piece if I can't get it apart. So I'd have one plant to plant out in the garden. That's the dahlia. What else do we have? Oh, gladiolus. OK, 
Okay, so glad this again is frozen. You have to imagine it frozen. So I wouldn't cut the tops off these till I want to dig them up because it'll be a little harder to find probably in the yard. So unless you had a row of them. So I'd leave about you know this much of a stem or a little bit less. And the, once it's dried up a bit, you'll be able to look at the bottom of it. And this is last. This is the corm that I planted last spring. And these are new little corms starting to grow here. And it'll take these a long, long time to become a new glad. But this part here you can pop off. It'll never grow anything again. And throw that part away. And this is what we're going to store in the basement. And at my house, it all goes into the basement in the dark where the furnace is. So it's not too cool, but a little bit cool and dark and damp, a bit damp. And then in the spring, all this stuff here, I can take it off. If I, if I feel like I want to start new plants with them, I can plant a little row out like I was planting carrots and do that for a couple of years and the, the corms might get big enough to have, uh, be big enough to flower then after that. That's our dahlias. Okay, so now this is a little more tropical plant. This is a calla lily. So the calla lilies, again, I, I leave these in the ground until there's almost a frost, until it's really cold, because what happens with this, because it's such a tender plant, it will start to fail. Like right now, it's still looking really healthy. I was hoping it'd be all wilted because I dug them up, I don't know, Saturday, uh, but they haven't wilted yet. So it would be all limp and kind of soft, watery. There's a lot of water in these stems. And then I would just cut them off. Now this year my callas, uh, they haven't grown as well as some years because it was so dry early in the year. Normally, a plant this big, each one of these little, little plantlets here would be almost as big as this. So this whole thing would be maybe this big. But because it was so dry at the beginning, they were set back quite a bit. And this is what I've got. So you can see, this is what I planted last spring and then this is this is the new growth that came out from those parts and when you plant cal uh, callas the top looks like the bottom sometimes but usually you can tell because there's little little bits of green coming up but the bottom has kind of a dip in it you might think it should be upside down when you plant it but it's not so I would just take these again leave them in the garage for a few days to make sure they're nice and dry and then put them in the basement with everybody else. So this year, I was in Brockville at Home Hardware, and I saw these caladiums. I thought, oh well, I've had them before, you know, and well, they don't do great, but they do all right. So I bought some of them to put in my wheelbarrow at the side of the house. So they're another tropical plant that's a very tender plant. So we don't want to wait until it's really cold for them. This is probably the best time to dig them up right now. So they have... I'm going to put these in the garage the way they are after today until the whole top dries up. So you can see again it was a little bulb and then these are the new little plantlets that have grown off the old bulb. So once everything's really dry, I'll be able to break the roots off. They'll be all dry. This will be dry, really dry. Break it all off. And with these, I've been reading where they, they really like to be dry over the winter. So they recommend putting them in uh, peat moss. So I probably will do that, and I'll probably take them to my brother-in-law's basement, because his basement's dry, 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 where he puts his cannas, and uh, leave them there for the winter. Try that worth a try anyway, eh? It doesn't cost anything, and then next year I'll have some maybe. I'll put them back in the pail here. So another flower that I really like, that I try to grow, is uh, Agapanthus. 
And Agapanthus is a Mediterranean kind of plant, so it doesn't mind being cold. It can stand a little bit of frost, but it likes it hot too. So people who grow it, who have sunrooms or greenhouses, they probably grow them all winter in their pots, in their houses. I don't have anything like that, uh, so I just have my basement. And here's the, my Agapanthus. So I'm going to water this right up until it gets, so we've had a few good frosts. I'm going to keep watering it, I'm going to leave it outside. And then, uh, before we have uh, so much frost that the pot is going to freeze on me, I'm going to take it and put it in the basement and uh, not water it very much. Not let it get super, super dry, but not water it too much. And I'll leave it down there for the winter. And then again, I don't have to wait until there's no danger of frost to bring it out because it's the kind of plant that in, in nature, sometimes it grows where, where it's a bit cold. So I'll bring it out and um, get it started early, really early, like I don't know, uh, at least the beginning of April. And then hopefully I'll have some flowers next year. So those are the things that I bring in, and I think most of us bring in the same things. Uh, that's, that's it for our tender perennials.